Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Puffy Tacos. That's right, if you were one of these people who thought there was only two kinds of taco shells, I'm here to tell you you were off by at least one. And sure, you could travel to San Antonio, Texas, where these were invented to enjoy some, but as you're about to see, they're surprisingly easy to make, not to mention a lot of fun because of all the puffing. And by the way, if you've never enjoyed tacos on freshly made corn tortillas, puffed or otherwise, you are in for a huge treat, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with this very simple dough. And we're going to start with the most important and pretty much only ingredient in this, masa arena, which I will discuss in detail on the blog post. But it's nothing more than a specially prepared type of corn flour that can be made from white or yellow corn. And as you can probably see, I am using the yellow corn variety, which probably means the white works better. But who knows? And if you're afraid you can't find this, don't be. Pretty much any really large supermarket should have it as well as, of course, any stores that specialize in Mexican or Latin American products. And to our masa arena, all we need to add is a little bit of salt, as well as some tepid water, which is what people that like to use obscure words call barely warm water. And then all we need to do here is mix this up, preferably with a clean hand, until a dough ball forms, which is only going to take a few seconds. So just keep mixing, and all that masa should pull away from the sides. And what we're shooting for here is something wet enough not to crumble apart, but something dry enough is not to be sticky. So as with all doughs, you may have to adjust with a little more masa or a little more water, but that's just you cooking. I mean, come on, is there anything more ridiculous than an online recipe review for a dough that says it didn't work because it was too wet or too dry? I mean, come on, that's all you. So as usual, don't be shocked if you have to make some minor adjustments. But ideally, you want to eventually end up with something that looks and feels like this. And then once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and portion this up so that we can form this into some relatively uniform balls. Or at least close. I mean, we are making tacos after all. No one's going to be measuring. And if they do, we're going to ask them to leave. But anyway, we're going to portion that up. I'm going to get eight taco shells out of this much dough. And I'm just going to do a couple here to show you. But we'll go ahead and we'll do that to all eight pieces. And then very important, once your dough balls are formed, we want to keep a damp paper towel over that while we work. All right, we don't want those drying out as we're pressing and frying. So just keep those covered with a barely damp paper towel. And then once our dough balls have been formed, it's on to the pressing. And some of you may be thinking, hey, I'd love to waste an afternoon making puffy tacos, but I don't have a tortilla press. I can't. No problem. I don't either. But all we have to do is split open a zip top bag and use that. Works great. We'll just flatten out that dough ball a little bit and place it between the two layers of plastic. And then use something flat and heavy like a pan or this meat pounder to press that out to about an eighth of an inch thick. And by the way, I don't like to make these too big. This is about half the size of what you'd see in a restaurant. But for me, this size is easier to form, easier to fry, and easier to eat. So you decide. The size is, of course, up to you. You are the boss of how many inches across. But anyway, we're going to flatten those out to, like I said, about an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths. And to me, that's looking pretty good right there. And as soon as our tortilla has been pressed, it's ready to fry. And usually this is done in a deep fryer in 350 degree oil. But at home, we can do this just by shallow frying in a small pan. And as usual, if it doesn't bubble when you put yours in, it wasn't hot enough. Stop and let it get hotter. So what we'll do is we'll carefully slide that into the hot oil. And then what we want to do very carefully with a spoon is sort of baste that hot oil over the top of the tortilla. We want to keep that hot oil circulating over the top because what's about to happen is the bottom and top of this kind of crust over. Air is going to be trapped in between the layers, which is going to expand. And magically, your tortilla is going to, what's the word I'm looking for? Puff. Check it out. And as soon as that's happened, we'll give it a couple more seconds before carefully flipping it over. And we'll give that side another 30 seconds or so. And that is pretty much it. Although I did flip it over one more time. I'm not sure why. That's probably not recommended. But I did it anyway. It's okay. And by the way, when these are done in a deep fryer, about halfway through the frying time, they're folded in half. But that's a lot trickier to do using the shallow fry method. I think it traps too much oil. So as you'll see, we're going to serve these kind of open face, which still works very well. But anyway, once our tortilla has puffed and cooked on both sides, we will carefully remove that from the oil and let that drain on a paper towel. And that is it. We just made a puffy taco. Well, actually, we just made a puffy taco shell. The actual puffy tacos themselves follow shortly thereafter. And what we want to do, because we didn't fold these, is while they're still warm, we'll push in that center a little bit so we have a place to put our meat and fixings. And if you want, you can also give them a little crease like this to give them a little more of that taco shellish appearance. And please do yourself a huge favor and eat these while they're hot or warm. Okay, so ideally you're gonna fill these as soon as they're fried. Or at the very least, keep them in a warm oven until you're ready. 
But I was so ready, so I used mine immediately and filled them with a fairly amazing Chipotle stewed chicken, which I guess I could show you, but I'm really not sure if you want to see that or not. I'm sorry. The consultant said I should try to be a little more coy. I'll try to show you that one of these days. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in my nice warm puffy taco shells and finish off with some typical fixins. I went with a little bit of diced avocado as well as some thinly sliced jalapeno. I also included some pickled red onion as well as some very finely shredded cabbage. They call it shredded, but it's actually sliced. And of course you could use lettuce instead, but take it from me. A real player uses white cabbage here. I mean, do you think someone like Rick Bayless is gonna use lettuce? I don't think so. And then I finish these off by drizzling over a little bit of crema, also known as sour cream. And then last but not least, a little bit of fresh cilantro leaf, as well as a little bit of fresh lime. And that's it. Our puffy tacos are ready to eat. And if these were yours, you would have ate them immediately, and they would have been awesome. But not me. I took pictures for a ridiculously long time, so these kind of got cold and soggy. And the only reason I mentioned that is because it was kind of falling apart here. So the moral of the story is eat these as soon as you can. But that aside, these really were still amazing. And I think the whole magic of these things, and why they're so good, is that we have something sort of halfway between a soft shell and a hard shell. Okay, some parts are crispy and crunchy, while other parts remain soft and flexible. So it really is a beautiful, beautiful combination. Which reminds me, if you ever happen to find yourself in San Antonio, Texas, I want you to remember two things. First, the Alamo. And I also want you to definitely remember to go out and have a proper puffy taco, okay? But in the meantime, I really do hope you give these a try at home soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.